Yo, what's going on, Ed Drunky, and welcome back to Drunky Andy. In this video, we take to the skies to rebuild an ancient kingdom in one of the most innovative city building slash management games that I think I've ever played. Our goal here on Buy or Skip is that by the end of this video, you'll have my opinion on enough information to know if you should buy or skip Airborne Kingdom. If you enjoyed this review while you're watching and you want to help us out, leaving a thumbs up helps other people find the channel and this video. If you enjoy the content here on Drunky Andy and you're new to the channel, subscribe so you can come back for more reviews and other indie game videos that we make. This is Airborne Kingdom, and here's my review. Airborne Kingdom was released into early access December 17, 2020. Developed and published by The Wandering Band, you can find this title in Epic Games at the base price of $24.99. As of this review, there is a sale running that knocks this price down to $19.99. Let's start this review with our first category, Story. One thing that is always appealing to me about the city management genre is the little stories that are put into place to draw you in as a player. I would say that by and large, most of these games have you building your settlement out of survival. You've wound up on some planet or some island, and you have to do this or else everyone there is going to perish. This isn't the case in Airborne Kingdom. With this game, you have rediscovered an ancient technology that has allowed you to rebuild this Airborne Kingdom. Instead of survival, your motivation in this game is to show others what is possible. As your kingdom grows, you're traveling around to different landlocked kingdoms in an attempt to have them ally with you. And as you complete various quests for them, you show them that this kingdom in the sky is possible, and they ally and join your cause. The story for this game is there and all the quests seemingly line up with your main objective and they're good but they're kind of lengthy just to kind of read through and I feel like with a game as visually stunning as this, uh, it being told through dialogue boxes is just a missed opportunity. You don't need an immersive or artistic storytelling for city management games but having one would have only served to take this game kind of to the next level. And I'm not trying to take too much away from it because the developers, they do establish a story and they, the intro is really cool where the guy talks like this and it feels epic and important. I just wanted a little bit more story there. You know, it, it's there, it serves its purpose, but we can always be more when it comes to story. I, I desperately want more story as, out of every game I'm playing nowadays. With the story covered, let's move into our next category with graphics. Oh, I love the graphics in this game. When you're zoomed out looking at the entire map to when you're zoomed all the way up on your, your villagers and your, your buildings, Airborne Kingdom knocks it out of the park in the looks department. There's an obvious Indian influence in the game and it can be felt from the architectural style all the way down to the world that is surrounding you. One of my favorite aspects about the game's art is just how intricate and working all the buildings are, especially when you zoom up on them. Every one of them that is producing is doing something with a gear or a lever has fans in action, and again, zooming up all the way when you start to realize just how much love and little tiny detail was crafted into it by uh, the Wandering Band's artist. Airborne Kingdom nails their visual style by creating an entirely new world in the sky, but it does it in such a way that it feels like it's always been lived in and there for you. For a genre where you spend hours on end staring at relatively the same thing, this game never feels old and it draws you in with ease while you're playing it. The graphics in this game really don't feel like they came from an indie studio with an it's absolute testament to the developers. I love the graphics in this game. I can't wait to spend more time just kind of poking around and seeing all the things I kind of miss artistically in this game. Great job on the graphics by the developers here. I could gush all day about the graphics, so let's move on to our next category and let's talk about gameplay. In the intro of this video, I mentioned that this game was an innovative city management game. And for a genre that's been around for so long and has had so many huge hits inside of it, I really thought there was no room left to go that would kind of blow me away. Realizing that there might not be a lot of room around them in this genre, the Wandering Band took their game to the skies. You could be thinking to yourself that a city management game that allows you to build in the sky just kind of seems like a gimmick on the same old template that we've all been playing. But what the developers of this game have done is more so let you build a city on top of an airplane or creating a city into an airplane. Not only are you building a city that becomes sprawling that is becoming self-sufficient, but you're building one that is actually going to move. In this game, you don't send your workers out to the forest or the mine shaft in the distance. Rather, in Airborne Kingdom, you bring your city to them. Your entire city in the sky moves from resource to resource in a bid to collect enough of the land to stay in the air a little bit longer. Flying from various landlocked kingdoms, your entire population is part of this journey and completing quests together. It's kind of amazing. If this idea itself wasn't enough, the Watering Band is adding an entirely new level of complexity to city building, and that's balance. As you grow your city, the forces of gravity are always working against you. Every time you place a new building, you have to pay attention to how the weight of that building is going to tilt your city. Too much weight on one side of the ship and your city becomes off balance and it's very noticeable and will make your population very upset with you very fast. This entire idea of being in the air has had me fully addicted to this game this past week. It creates not only a challenge of survival but an opportunity for creative builds that you're pushing the limits of tilt and lift on an airplane. 
Still, there are some gameplay elements in Airborne Kingdom that I felt lacking when compared to other city management games. My biggest gripe is how the population is managed with their jobs. To build the structure in this game outside of housing, you need workers to construct it. If you wish to build, let's say, a research building, then there must be five workers available, and once this is built, they are part of the research building forever, like the wood or the brick that stands it up. There are challenging moments in this game, like all city building games, where you need additional workers to farm resources in clutch moments where your, your city is almost falling apart. And so you're met with this choice of either destroying the building entirely and the resources you spent building on it, or risk going without those additional workers. I wish there was an option to turn off the building to kind of free up the workers. Also, I would like a way to construct a building before I have the workers available. Features like this would help in more creative builds that can be planned out a little bit more and done before you actually have the full workforce and the full population to have it achieved. But overall, my complaints and wishes for the gameplay of Airborne Kingdom are so far outweighed by my enjoyment of being actually challenged in new ways inside of the city building genre. The gameplay in this game will have you coming back for hours trying to find brand new ways to build your city in the sky. Fantastic gameplay in this game. Next up, sound. The big standout of Airborne Kingdom Sound is the soundtrack for the game. The developers have created some amazing tracks for you to listen to while you spend hours creating your city. Everything is very rhythmic with a lot of unique sounding drums and instruments from Indian culture that don't necessarily find their way into gaming all that often. One of the things I found about this game's music is just how great it was at keeping me focused on what I was doing while also still giving me this sense of journey and achievement. In fact, this game's soundtrack might be one of the best you could find if you're looking to have something on while you're doing a little bit of studying or getting tasks done in real life. There was nothing that stood out at too harshly in the soundtrack, it was present and set the tone, and it really served as an avenue to let the gameplay shine. Another part of the sound that I love is just the general sense of airiness in it. Everything you do on your ship, you have this gentle flow of air, this soft wind that is making its way over it all. This gentle sound is pitch perfect for your adventure. You would seriously be hard pressed to find anything wrong with the sound of this game in Airborne Kingdom. It's fantastic from the start to finish. Now let's talk about our last category, replayability. It's hard for me to not be biased when talking about replayability in a city management game. I am just addicted to the genre. When I sit down to start building a new city, I get lost for hours and hours on end, making sure that the pathways look great, that the building clumps kind of feel natural, and that all my population is extremely happy with me and what I'm doing for them as their overlord. When thinking about Airborne Kingdom and its replayability, I think this holds up against some of the biggest names in the genre. I've already come back and restarted my cities about two or three times to make something a little bit more unique or a little bit more better during this entire time I've been writing the review. And one of the interesting features about this in the replayability field is that every time I come back to start a new game, the game seems to change up the order that it will be giving me the building and the pieces that I need to research. Sometimes I'll get my big fans early on so I have a lot of lift. Sometimes I'll get my propellers early so that my city is going a little bit faster this build. Every time it does, it's forcing me to rethink what I thought my build was going to be to something that fits more of the game's uh, natural progression. The types of cities that you can build in this game, from balance on every side to something being a little bit more overbuilt on the tail end of your city, just the variety of builds that I can think of that can be created in this game, it will likely have me come back to this game a few more times this year. If you're a slightest fan of the city builder or city management genre, then you'll absolutely get tons of replayability out of Airborne Kingdom in ways that other games of the genre just haven't given you yet. Buy or skip Airborne Kingdom. Ever since I purchased Airborne Kingdom, I more or less have been thinking about it throughout my day. It's a journey in the sky that feels so fantastic not just as a city management game, but also as an adventure to play through. And whether you're a newcomer or a veteran to city management games, the Wandering Band has made a refreshing take on this genre and it adds new challenges and creativity that just hasn't been there before. My recommendation? I think you should absolutely buy Airborne Kingdom. Alright, there is the review for Airborne Kingdom. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it kind of helped you out, informed you to make your choice on if you want to buy or skip Airborne Kingdom. If you did enjoy the review, whether or not you liked the game, make sure you leave a thumbs up to help other people discover the video and help make their choice. If you're new here to Drunk Indy, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And here's a couple other things that I do on YouTube. Clickety-clackety if you want. And I will see you guys on the next review next week. Bye, everybody.